well, on the Super Series list, not able to be here, Wang Shoshian, because only two players per country permitted into the Super Series finals. Simon Nawal lives and trains in Hyderabad. The 21 year old Super Series ranking of five. Having played 11 events, just missed the Malaysia event, and that's because she missed these Super Series finals of 2010 due to an ankle injury. But the left hander, Sayaka Sato, just 20 years of age, number seven on the Super Series ranking list. All 12 tournaments she's supported, 12 of 24 individual tournaments she's played this year. For Sina Newell. Has been as high as number two on the world rankings, but down at number four at the moment. Coached by Pilela Gopichand, Commonwealth Games gold medalist. Sina Newell, and in fact, was the number two seed at the World Championships last year in Paris, lost in the quarterfinal. David Craig from Scotland and Greg Villacott from Australia are two match officials. Well, obviously both of these players played yesterday. Sato played against Wang Sin and didn't even reach double figures in either game. Lost in double quick time, 21-7, 21-9 in 26 minutes. Whereas Sina Newell had a real, real battle against another left-hander, Bei Youngju. Came through in an hour and four minutes, 21-14 in the deciding game. Now this is the third meeting between these two players in senior badminton that is whilst they've played against each other in the world junior championships that doesn't count towards world rankings or head-to-head -head statistics and of the previous two encounters they've each won one of them but in slightly unusual the fact that we have here in group b three of the four players are left-handers that is unusual isn't it it is yes I don't know whether you were there's Pulela Gopachand. I don't know if you were able to get a glimpse of Simon Nawal's match yesterday against Bei Youngju, but an hour and four minutes suggests that it was a very very tough encounter. And whilst obviously you and I had concerns about the form of Sato in her match against Wang Sin, she looked mentally tired I think more than anything having played so many tournaments this year I'm just wondering if in fact really the physicality of Simon's match yesterday will have a detrimental effect today uh, I'm, I'm not sure I wouldn't think so I would think she'll be very very pleased with the victory it's a player who's posed a lot of problems to her in the past Bay uh, awkward game counter-attack type game She's had a lot of problems with her this year when she's played her. So I think she'll actually be on a bit of a high having won that. She knows if she can win today, she'll be through to the semis. So I think she'll be in quite a positive frame of mind for this match. Yeah. Whereas Sato really did struggle yesterday, you have to say. Didn't look in any sort of form. So we had quite a long discussion yesterday about Sato and about her tournament program and the development of younger players when they, they don't have so many 
excellent sparring partners as the Chinese women's singles players do, obviously, in the training camp. There's so many good Chinese women's singles players, and so therefore players from other countries have to go out and play more tournaments. But, you know, I think it's it's been an interesting development as well with Sina Nawal, because, of course, two years ago she won her first Super Series title, the Indonesian Open, then retained it a, a year after that. In fact, had a great run of three tournaments back-to-back, -back and uh, two of those being Super Series tournaments. And this year struggled more in that I think other players have really taken her very seriously. They've been watching her style of play. They've worked out where her strengths, where her weaknesses are. And I have to say, it's it's a shame to, to read some of the stories in the Indian media about, well, not being too harsh on, on Saina Nawal, but being rather negative, sort of saying she's half a pace slower than she was a year ago and she's really got to prove herself again. I always think with the player's development, there's a, a real sort of steep learning curve where there's a dramatic improvement and then there's a time of consolidation. Yeah, I, I think this year has been a bit special for her actually because she had a great year in 2010, really hit the highs, played really well and then just at the end of 2010, beginning of 2011, she had that ankle injury and she missed a couple of events and I had the feeling and I think we spoke about it at the time that she came back a little bit early, her movement wasn't good and she lost to opponents who she'd been beaten in 2010 and I think it really affected her confidence and I think, and it, I think it's taken her a long time to get back and recover from that and it's not necessarily the injury but the um, sort of loss of confidence of coming back a little bit too early, losing some matches, the movement wasn't great. I think it's taken a long time to recover from that. Yes, yeah, a sort of psychological scarring from feeling under pressure to play the yeah. Super Series events when not 100% fit. Yeah, she definitely came back too early. She wasn't confident, she wasn't moving 100% as we know she could. Yeah, straight down the line, good call. And uh, she's had a, a patchy season. She's had yeah. some really good tournaments, but she's had some strange results. You'd also say when she got to world number two, she had some tough, one or two tough draws as well when she was coming back from the injury. She drew high-class Chinese opponents in first and second rounds, and where on paper it looked a bad result for a second seed to be losing, you know, these were players that were not easy to beat for her. The message is is that the fans in India should not panic. She's a class player and she hasn't lost that talent or class overnight. She's had an injury problem and she maybe psychologically had a bit of a dent, but yeah, keeps supporting. Yeah, and from one or two of the interviews around the time I seemed to have the feeling that she'd never had an injury. Mm. You know, she you know, she'd seemed to she'd played injury free through a junior career and I think it was a little bit different for her and it, you need to learn how to deal with these things and learn to be patient with the comeback and everything and know your own body yeah understand you know how your own body and your own mind works and when you're ready to come back all part of the learning process oh good net shot Goodness gracious, what on earth happened there? Nine, Completely changed her mind, surely. It's very strange. Completely distracted, maybe there's just something drifted down from the ceiling, distracted it. She certainly looked straight up afterwards. Suspiciously at that shuttle, that's for sure. Ah, that's nice. Yeah, 
That's a good angle. Touch there. Forced to take the shuttle and very low down, but lovely control. You will see it. Get a good angle of it there. On to the top of the tape. Nice touch. Of course, the other learning curve, I suppose, you've already talked about learning to deal with injuries and coming back and knowing your own body, but. I suppose also for Sina Nawal to reach the status of world number two at such a young age, to command such interest in her home country. You've also got to learn with the burden, to deal with the burden of expectation, because all of a sudden the media are talking about you, everybody's expecting you to produce outstanding results week in, week out, and that's just not humanly possible. I mean, it's, you know, it's quite natural to have highs and lows throughout the season and I think learning to deal with that burden of expectation is something else that takes time uh, it is but I think no one's more impatient than Sina herself mm. she puts a lot of pressure on herself I think she's desperate to achieve she's desperate to win things and um, you know I don't think she's the finished article yet Oh, definitely not you know uh, yeah you know this we see we saw it there a little bit you know for me there's it's a big smash or it's a slow drop. The, the cuts are not there yet. The subtle changes in variation of pace. You know, she's got a 100% smash or it's a 50% pace sort of drop shot. And she needs the 60%, the 70%, 70%, the more variety on the attacking shots, more change of pace, better angles. These are things that will come. She's only 21 years of age. And she's been number one in India for a long time already, so you yeah. know, her sparring opportunities at home are limited. She's very much on her own, although there's a very talented young player coming through behind her, you'd have to say. India's got a great crop of young players coming through, both male and female at the moment. Yeah, Sindar, I think, the 16-year-old yeah. women's yeah. singles Looks player. very good. But also, Ian, I mean, we ought to make mention of the fact that the... Japanese nationals last week finished on Sunday and a 16 year old 16 years four months won the women's singles title and that's absolutely extraordinary she didn't actually play the final because Hiroshi was not well but it is still extraordinary that a 16 year old has won the Japanese nationals well there's a fantastic crop of young girls coming through at the moment you'd have to say Thailand's got a great Great group coming through. Taiwan, Japan. There's some real talent coming through at the moment on the female side. It's interesting, isn't it? If you took the average age of the ladies' singles super series at the moment and the men's, mm, yes. there's a huge difference. Absolutely. A lot of teenagers breaking through on the girls' scene at the moment, really at world class level. Yes, and yet we were talking yesterday about the men's singles and the longevity of, well, four players that have remained at the top of World Badminton for almost a decade. Lin Dan, Lee Chong Wei, Peter Gaida, Talpik Hidia. Of course, there's a few more coming into the mix now with the likes of Chen Long. Yeah, Chen Long would be the obvious one. He's the younger player that has broken through. But... After that, it's been older players that have been moving up the rankings, really. Sho Suzaki. Yeah. Tian Min from Vietnam. These are not young players, but they've gradually improved over the years. Broke through in, broken through into the top ten this year. As for the really young players, they're not, they're not around at Super Series level at the moment on the men's side. Victor Axelson's probably the youngest that has played Super Series this year, I would think. Yeah. Former world junior champion.
neither player really able to to dominate this game at the moment. Stopped, didn't it? The, yeah. the drift nearly stopped that. Started off, it was going a long way out. The wind really held it up. Well, David Craig, the umpire, and we'll be allowing Sato to tell down. Shas now having won the point, he'd probably let her. But of course, having broken that run of points, shows that really it was just a tactical thing. She wanted to break the game up. If she was that desperate, she'd have asked again. So just to explain that a little bit further, the protocol, whilst it's not a, a rule, is that if you ask to towel down and you're the receiver, it's perceived as... Yeah, I mean, Sina had won four consecutive points. She was on a roll. And Sato, I think the umpire decided that Sato was just trying to break the game up, trying to break the rhythm of her opponent, so he made a play on. I think if she'd have asked after she'd won the point and broken that run of points, he would have probably said yes. Strings gone in the racket of Sina Nawal. Well, that'll frustrate Sato even more when she sees this. Clear would have probably done with broken strings. Yeah, look of anguish. change of direction. Sato was in control for most of that rally, getting in early, forcing Sina to use the high lift. Nice change of direction, forcing Sato off balance. change of direction isn't it that poses the problem cross defense at the moment is very effective here for Sina yeah 19, well it was that run I think of six points from 8 12 down to 14 12 that really changed the momentum of this Sina now just two points away from this opening game Make that one point away. Twelve or fifteen points. Yeah, 
the opening game, coming from behind. And as confirmed by the umpire, takes the opening game. 21-16 in 17 minutes of play. And again, it was the quick change of direction that caused the problem. Sato struggling a little bit just to sort of position her feet in the to get a good push off to change direction. She's actually moving when Sina's hitting the shuttle and that makes it more difficult to change direction. You really need to be just pausing and getting into a solid base position when your opponent strikes the shuttle that Sato is actually moving a lot of the time when Sina's hitting and that's making it difficult for her to change direction. Coach talking very much about options from the front of the court. When she's got in, she's shown good touch around the front of the court. So maybe needs to mix it up a little bit with one or two quick pushes to the rear court. Nice. Yeah, nice touch, just held it, fixed her opponent. And just changed the direction. The key was taking the shuttle early. Oh my goodness, great net shot from the left-hander. My goodness, every inch of the court was explored in that rally. Yeah, you had the feeling Sina was always in control of the rally right to the end. Sina found, it, found a nice rhythm at the end of that first game. Sato is certainly having to work extremely hard throughout the whole of that rally. Sina showing good precision, as you say, using every inch of the court. Sato did well, stuck in there and eventually got a chance to take it early at the net and found a lovely net roll. Indecision at the back of the court as to whether to play the shuttle or not. Yeah, definitely hesitated there. the line. Sato oh. wasn't convinced. Yeah, we're quite well placed down that line. Certainly looked in from here. So it actually skidded on the line. And that's gone with the drift. Drift st still very much left to right as we look at the court. A strong current of air down the hall. And that's 
That is nice variety using the centre of the court. First time she's done that. Mixing her attack up a little bit. And that's come back in. Yeah, that's the drift again. We actually had a good view of that, didn't we? We could see the shuttle coming back. Started it outside the court, drifted it back in. Were you a note taker? Yes, I was. Yeah, and I've still got them all. Is that right? Yeah, don't like throwing coaching notes away. Just seemed to run out of ideas at the back of the court there. So Yaka Sato. Good movement. Moving quickly backwards on that diagonal. Getting behind the shuttle really well. Getting into a good, powerful position. Short. Oh, my goodness, she shouldn't yeah. put that away. It's a strange shot. She had to play an extra five or six shots there, didn't she? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Two or three shots later, she smashed her about three metres further back in the court. Sato all off balance there. Seemed a little bit hesitant for a start as to whether the shuttle was going to come over. Hopefully, we'll see that again. But my goodness, she played a magnificent shot to the back of the court. Oh, oh yes. That's a big fault. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a massive fault. I'm not even sure the shuttle was going <laughs> over. Well, I thought in the previous match that the umpire made an incorrect decision. That was absolutely spot on. Yeah, that was an easy one for him. A run of five straight points and it's pressure at exactly the right moment isn't it yeah Sina looks as though she's re re found a little bit of confidence I think that win last night will have done her a lot of good it's an opponent she's had problems with in the past and here when she needed to up the tempo in the first game she was able to do it she was able to pull away at the right moment in this second game she looks well in control at the moment it's Sato that's having to do all the hard work at the moment that quick change of direction lateral change of direction that's really causing problems for Sato's footwork she's not getting a very good base position here again we see she's moving when Sina actually hits the shuttle which means she's not positioned ready to move either left or right she's favoring one leg and that makes the change of direction very difficult <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, he's a very quiet, softly spoken man, is Pilela Gopachan, which makes it a little bit difficult for us to hear what he's saying to his player. We'll have to give him instructions to speak up next time. Yep, well, they need to get the microphone a bit closer. <laughs> Final run of seven straight points. Masato needs to break that run as quickly as possible. Mm, that, that's nice. Control, but Sato off balance in the rear court. Cross clears dangerous, opened up her own court. Sina took full advantage. Angle though. Five. It's one of the favourites, that forehand cross drop. Nice disguise, sets up straight, cuts across the shuttle and brings it down across the court. It'll take a monumental effort though from the Japanese youngster. And, and they're just emphasising your point here. Yeah. yeah, she's not really in position to push off, is she? No, can't change direction. Sets off on the move, and if it's in the wrong direction, it's a big problem. Just warning Sato not to try and influence the line judges. Balance. Plant to the foot. Didn't really get the racket to the shuttle. See, she was weight was moving forward as she hit. She wasn't in a solid position. Sato beginning to look a little bit tired. Just had to do a lot of running in this game. That was sort of certainly a tired shot. She intercepted the shuttle very high in the court, but just couldn't control the movement. All off balance. Oh, that's Six lovely. Yeah, Great that's angle. Play. Quick push to the rear court, forcing her opponent to take it late, and then using the space across the court. It's that quick change of direction again, very effective. Wait. 
Nice. Yeah, just cuts this one down shorter than the first one, same direction. And again, the footwork of Sato. All, all awry, I'm afraid. points away then from securing her place in the semi-final with still one match in the group to go. Drift again. I'm sure Goppy asking her to just concentrate, keep the pressure on. Doing a little mathematical calculation here, and I'm not sure I was right on that. If the other two players in the group, of course, Wang Sin has played one match so far and won one. Bei Yong Ju played one, lost one. But if Bei Yong Ju was to beat Wang Sin, and then if Naewal was to lose to Wang Sin, and Bei Yong Ju was to beat Sato, then it'd be very, very complicated. I think we need to get the calculators out. Yeah, he started to lose me a little bit there, but the key to all of that, I think, will be that uh, Sina beat Bay. So even if Bay gets up to two wins, it would be the head-to-head. -head. Yeah. And that will put Sina through, so I'm sure there maybe is a mathematical way that she can't qualify, but in reality, I think she can safely say she's, uh, she's through. So I probably should have just kept quiet and, and gone with my instincts. No, I enjoyed listening to it. <laughs> opportunities. Oh, good rally, good quality from both players there. Great net exchange. That's it. Yeah. Well, really dominated the second game, did sign an AWOP. 21 13. I have to say that Sayaka Sato looking very tired by the end of the match. Awful lot of tournaments for her this year, an awful lot of travel, as you were pointing out yesterday. But it means that Sina Nawal has now played two matches and won two matches with that victory over Sato. 21-16, 21-13 in 36 minutes.